Just like this bad boy. Yeah. Let's bless this with this one room this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is a torch. torch. It's a blowtorch. We... <laughs> we exhaled. We shouldn't have. Episode three, we're back. We're still going. Number three, we're going. This is the, this is the longest running podcast we've ever been a part of. <laughs> the only running podcast I've ever been part of. Well, it's it's no. I ha- I have tried some podcasts before, like, but I just never followed through. Really? Yeah, it just just was it was bad. Like they probably weren't as good as this one. Nope, it was terrible. Didn't have me. But yeah, so we're here. We are here. Why you are you know, so weird right now? <laughs> Why are we being so yeah, weird? I don't know. I think we had a lot of technical difficulties just before. Oh, yeah, before. it's true. What's up? Technical difficulties. We're waiting. It's been hours. Tim is, uh, has misophonia. And the misophonia transmitted to the card. And we have a bunch of problems. Uh, this day has been chaotic. Chaotic day. It was Mercury in retrograde. It was a month ago. And we were in a groove. We were in a groove and now and we're, we're out of a groove. Out of the groove. We're Let's get, get into the back groove. into the groove. Okay. You know what I realized is we haven't actually properly introduced ourselves. I don't need no an introduction. I am Johnny Kim. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, introduce yourself. Fucking Senor. rolling my eyes under this these sunglasses. Like how though? It's like... Hi, my name is Tim. My favorite color is green. <laughs> so lame. <laughs> no, like wh- who what we kind are. Kind of introduction. Wh- what do we do? Like, all right, here I'll, I'll give it a Hi, try. Hi, I'm Johnny. I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm I'll, Johnny. I'll give it a shot. Let me give okay, it a go, shot. Go ahead. I'll okay. follow. I'll follow. Okay. Bring your your mic away from your mouth so we don't hear you fucking breathing the whole time. I'm a mouth breather. <laughs> <laughs> That'll tie into later. Um, all right, my name is Tim. Uh, Hello, born, Tim. Born and raised in Montreal. I'm 32 years old. Whoa. I guess I'm a filmmaker, video editor, shooter, producer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it sounds so lame. I know it sounds lame, but like, say it, it, it out loud. It's it like- is what we do. It is what I do. I don't know. I haven't made a film in a long time, but that's kind of what I'm into doing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> You're right. Why do we need to introduce ourselves? Hi, I'm Johnny, and I am a human. Okay, I'm a content creator, if you haven't know, noticed. I don't know what I am. How would they notice that you're a content creator? If you follow me on Instagram. Uh doesn't exist. <laughs> doesn't exist. Hello, Johnny is back on uh, Instagram at shutbarjfk. Uh, you can follow him there. I'm Johnny. I've been making content for a while. And I don't even know how to describe myself. I, I just I just do things that I like. That's that's how I would describe myself. You just, I'm Johnny and I do things that I like. I just do the things that I want whenever I want to, wherever I want. Oh, really? Because I'm the champ. You, you live a free, unhinged life. Yo, I'm on vacation. Sounds I'm great. unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just living life. No life. I'm just no life left living. Left. Jesus. God, you, you go on vacation for four days and you're It's only been different three person. days. Three days. No, it hasn't. It's Wednesday. Oh, the weekend didn't count. The weekend counts. I guess it counts, yeah. But like fully disconnect starting what was starting Monday. So that's why your sunglasses on because you're you're on vacation, vacay mode. I'm blocking all the haters from my <laughs> Yeah, I'm on vacation, got the Hawaiian shirt. Pull that one out, you know. Just uh living my best life right now. Mm. You know, just I don't know. What have you been doing? 
pretty much a lot of nothing. I've been waking up late, not late. I've just been waking up at okay times. Go to the gym, mm-hmm. come back home, eat a little bit, and make some music and read books. That's what I've been doing, and it's been amazing. I, I just realized, like, I guess yesterday, I was like, man, this is how my brain functions normally without the pressure or the grasps of work, yes? Right. And it's just more like, oh, yeah, I, I can do these things without stressing or fit, like, or more like being under the, the impression of like, oh, I have this certain amount of time per day. You know, I just finished work mm-hmm. at five. I got to make dinner. I have like maybe an hour or two to do whatever I can and then go back to bed and restart. Now it's just more like, hey, I'm just like, you know, taking day by day. And, you know, I have a lot of more days left. So <laughs> it's only day three. I have another full two weeks left. I think I think it's important to disconnect like that, right? Like, yes, I, I had a couple of days off last week, like those four day weekends. And, and just that ability to kind of look at your day and go like, I have nothing to do today. What do I, like, uh, uh, you know, possibilities are endless. You know you're not actually going to do all that much, but just the the feeling is really different. Right? Yeah, you just, either you're just bored and you're just, that boredom becomes like, oh, I'll just do this thing I haven't done for a bit. Like I, I had time to read some of my books before I would be like, oh, I'm so tired. And books would either like, you know, put me to sleep and now I'm just like fully. So you've been reading during the day? Yeah. Wow. I can't do that. I can only read... At night? Really early in the morning, if it's a weekend and I'm waking up and I'm like, I'm allowing myself the next 30 to 45, like if it's early enough, you know? Yeah. Or yeah, like right before bed, any night. But see, that's why, because it's like, oh, before you go to work or after work. means now it's just like, what am I going to do? Watch YouTube or movies all day? No, I'd rather Mm -hmm. just do that. Put on some jazz music, read my book. Now, are they books? Are they fictional? Are no, they're all... Uh, well, right now I'm trying to finish the Action Bronson book. The last one that he came out with. Which right, is what's, called, what's that one actually about? I think it's about more about him. It's just him about... Uh, it's slightly motivational, but it talks about him and like how he's brought up his work. I'm at the page where he talks about what the chapter... It's about his steroid years. Like he used to do steroids. Really? Yeah. And just, this is before he was... Uh, like famous this is before he was a rapper I think it was he was like starting to rap but it was like it was, he had a phase where he was like really into like you know working out all the time like it's well, really that's what he's doing that's what he's doing now that's what he's doing now but like he used to do that before too okay. and he just talks Didn't about like the, all these gyms that he used to go to in New York like these underground gyms and then he talks about like doing steroids in the back alley and stuff like that. It's pretty oh, interesting. Wow. It's funny. There's a lot of stuff like when you read it, you can sense that it's like him talking because just if he's such a character. But yeah, yeah, the book is pretty good. I think it's called, I can't remember. It's like something, I'll, fuck it, I'll start tomorrow or today or something like that. You fuck it, I'll do it tomorrow maybe? I think, just Google it's it. Like a, it's a play off of like fuck, fuck that's delicious. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. But... That's yeah, cool. so I'm trying to finish that. I'm like halfway through it. I have a pile of books that I, I, I hopefully I can read like two two books, three books maybe, if I'm consistent in, in your three weeks of vacation. Yes, that'd be pretty good. That'd be pretty good. I've been reading one book for the past like a year or two. What book is that? <laughs> it's called Born to Run. So you're born to not run because you're not running. It I could dive into that, that book. book. It's a uh, it's a very interesting interesting book. It's about running and how. How humans were potentially born to run, and it is the differentiator. It's how we uh, evolved. It played a big factor into that. But I think maybe I'll talk about that another time. It's a great book. Like it, it to motivates read. you to to want to run, but also like you're getting a bit of a story of this writer who became a runner and interviewed these uh, these people that are down in fuck. I don't want to get the the words wrong, but the there's this culture called the Tara Humar. Oh, fuck. I'm already getting it wrong. I'm going to do my research <laughs> and I'll come back and tell yeah. you about the book. That's cool. But yeah, I've been good. reading it for like a year and I'm finally almost finishing it, putting in a bit more time. Just put in some time. That's all I got to yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, I actually made a lot of music, to be honest. So I've been, so yeah, going to the gym and then eat 
And then I would just make music for like a good three hours to four hours. Wow. Which has been really cool. I have like actually like today one song that it's like close to finish. I would say 75% finish hmm. and that I'm actually pretty stoked on because I would like to release it. What genre? Are uh, we, are it's, a, it's like very like, it's like electronic. If if sounds like a soundtrack like type of music, but it's very, it feels cinematic in my head. I, I visually feel that it's like a cinematic type of sound, but it's like electronic and like nice synths and stuff like that. No, cinematic as in like soundtrack -y. Yeah, a bit. I don't know. It just sounds like it could fit in like an intro or mm. could fit in a film. I don't know. It's pretty good. Can we like, cue some? Oh, no. It's not finished. But when it's, it's finished, finished, we'll play it. We'll play it. Hopefully, it'll be finished episodes. by my end of vacation. Uh, hi, a note from the editor. Johnny has not finished his track yet. Uh, he's in the middle of mixing it. So uh, maybe in, in three episodes, we'll play the song for you. And yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, anyway, back to the pod. Sweet. Like, like it, it's been good. Like, I've been, like, I used to be, like, not energized or felt, like, inspired. But having that time off, I think, I don't know, I've just been doing it and I've just been hacking away. Hmm. And just, like, I don't know. Actually, pretty productive. I'm very happy for you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy, too. I got my second vax today. Ooh. Dose number two. I'm free. Damn. I'm Can loaded. I, get um, I feel fine, honestly. I thought that I... Okay, so when I got the first one, you know that that 15 minutes where you have to wait? Yeah. Um, so at the first one, I went and I got it at the hospital. And then I was waiting. And within that 15-minute time span, my brain was like... I had like a mini panic attack of... What if you're one of the people really? who 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 dies or <laughs> has oh, like man. a complication from uh, from the vaccine? And obviously that's all in my head. Nothing happened. <laughs> so then I go again today, and I'm like, already it's same place, same thing. I'm used to it. I'm like, it, it'll be totally fine this time. Same thing. I get it. I'm fine. I sit down, and then that 15 minutes of waiting, I'm just like, my body is like thinking it's something's wrong. It's fucking dumb. Really? I didn't have that. Yeah, man. It's really stupid. It's just anxiety and like, I don't know. I felt fine. I was just like, all right, that's it. I guess I got a chip on my arm now. <laughs> yeah, if, any, a, if anything, I'm like, it's a little egotistical of me. I was saying this to someone today. It's a little egotistical of me to think that I'd be special enough to die, <laughs> to be one of the rare cases to actually die from the vaccine. That would right suck, away. then this podcast would not. What's up? Technical difficulties. Weird feelings returns after this. Okay, yeah, so if I die, you have to keep coming back to the podcast, to this room. To do it by myself. Wherever we are, and you, you got to do it in my honor. I have to like dig up your body. You have to get to at least a hundred episodes. A hundred episodes, but I dig up your body and your bones, and you and you and you lay them out right. I lay them right beside you. <laughs> I'll give you permission to my family. I'll let them know. That'd be um, hilarious, but yeah, no, I got my second vaccine. It's good. I'm happy. Kind of over it, you know. It's not as big of a deal as getting the first one. I feel like it's just kind of like the thing that I need to do, and I did it, and it's done. It's oh. I got something new. Well, I didn't get something new. What did you get? But I realized I had something that I wanted, <laughs> that I thought I needed to get, that I already had. Herpes. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes. No, uh, I, so I've been wanting to shoot on film for a little while now. Um, nice. Like film photography. And I have a friend who lives in France who I met here a long time ago. His name is, I won't name him because he likes being nameless. He has no friends. That's what it's trying to That's say. really what it is. Um, <laughs> Does not exist. But I've been uh, waiting for him to send me a camera. He's in France. Sure. And anyway, he's been delaying and whatever, and I don't know what he's doing, but. Yeah, because <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah, he doesn't exist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> your friend from France mm -hmm. delayed your camera. Okay, go on. Not my camera. He he's a guy that collects film cameras of all kinds. Okay, this guy from yeah, France, this, yeah, sending you a camera. Yeah. Okay. But he didn't. So anyway, I was in my room the other day taking 
a picture of my plants. What a weird transition. <laughs> my friend from France. Hear, hear me camera. out. Hear me out. Let me tell I the was fucking story. My, I was Jesus in Christ. My room. <laughs> okay. Johnny interrupts over here. Because it's funny. <laughs> All right, go ahead with your friend. All right. No, because it's nothing to do with my friend. In this, your room. All right. <laughs> Okay, what do you do in your room by yourself with a camera? Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another story. But for this story, I realized I already have a film camera. Okay. Because um, I have my dad's old uh, Fuji film, which you can see right down there. Um, but I just, for some reason, it did not occur, occur to me that I, that I could use it for some reason. Um, and so the other day I, I checked it out and I unwound the film and realized there was something inside of there and brought it into uh, Photo Saint Denis, our local film processing place. And uh, turns out there was no, uh, no, no exposures on the film. It was really disappointing. Turns out there was actually nothing. There's no camera, there's no <laughs> film. And Hold it, on, there is a camera. And, and it's Tim's imagination. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new thing in my life. I got an imagination. That's cool. Film photography is cool. From what Yeah, I, I mean, I've never, I've never done it. So, like I take photos with my phone. You know, I've done it with DSLRs, but I've never used... A film camera. You never use like a throwaway, like a Okay, disposable? that's true. That's the same thing. Okay, no, but the difference is those are automatic. Yeah. And the exposure and everything, it just, it does it for you and you don't think about it. You take the shot and you're good. Yeah. Mine is, it's like a manual exposure. So you're setting the aperture, you're setting the frame rate or the shutter speed. Yeah. And then that's it. Just like a normal camera. <laughs> I know, but you can't see, you don't see the results. Oh, you don't see the results, yeah, which is always cool. You can't cool. look through the viewfinder and go like, oh, okay, yeah, it looks good. Clink. You you literally have to, I had to get an app on my phone, a light meter, yeah, to check the settings, the light, and then adjust the shutter speed so that hopefully whenever I get these this film, like this roll exposed, I'll have some pictures that are hopefully... <laughs> Nice. Something. But I think it's fun because it's like you don't like you, sh you do your shot composition, you shoot it, but it's like the adventure of like going to develop it and then mm -hmm. seeing the result where everything is like instant if you have like a regular like digital, like a DSLR. But yeah, I remember when I used to take photos with my, uh, what was it called? My film camera. My dad had like had a Minolta. Okay. So you've done it before. Yeah. I've done it before. I also have like a, what's it called? A Roly. Rolly Flex, it's like those square format, right? I have, I have that one, which is that one's cool because it's like you could, I don't know, just like super old. Okay. But yeah, it was fun to shoot with that and just like, I don't know. I think shooting photo in general is just fun because you're just capturing life and you just walk around and. You're saying photography in general, not necessarily just in general. Film. I haven't done yeah. that in a while. You yeah, know? I mean, I take pictures with my phone all the time and I edit Same. them and whatever, yeah. but. There's, from my, you know, I've taken like four or five shots so far but the, with the film camera and yeah. like everything feels purposeful, right? Yeah. You don't want to waste a roll. So you're not just like clicking away, shooting away. You're like, okay, what should I actually take a picture of? Exactly. And then I start thinking, I'm like, well, I want to take pictures of probably people because I want to capture a moment with someone or something. Um so yeah, it's interesting. I guess it's like, it's different. So you have your phone and you, with your phone, you don't really think about it. You just shoot whatever. But yeah, like you said, like if there's a reason for you to sh use every sh shot from a roll. But every time that you pick up your camera, your uh, your film camera, mm -hmm. you kind of go on an adventure, right? Like that's how it feels like. You, you're like, today I'm going to go out. Yeah, I want to take some photos. I'm going to walk around the streets, the city, whatever, but I'll take photos. Like maybe I'll just do like, I don't know, uh, shots of old Montreal buildings and that's your mm -hmm. third, how many, how many shots? 32? It depends on the role. The, I think the one that I have currently is 24. Oh, 24. It's not a lot. But you should try a black and white. So oh. that's what I, I bought two, two like lower end rolls. One is the Kodak 200, really basic kind of low end footage and then a roll. And then another, I forget the brand, but it's black and white 
maybe 200 or 400. I don't remember. So when you buy, so let's say Kodak 200, the ISO is 200? Yeah. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, that's the interesting thing is like in a digital camera, you can change the ISO whenever you want. Um, but the ISO on film, I don't understand it 100%, but it's locked, right? It's the chemicals, it's the way that that film interacts with the light. Yeah. That's the ISO that it has. So it's set. So the Kodak 200, it's set at 200. I can't bump it up to 400, 800, whatever, to make it brighter. It's set at that. So my aperture has to be open enough and my shutter speed has to either be long enough or fast enough to get a good exposure. Man, I wonder how I was shopping for that kind of camera back in the day, just that those old cameras. I don't understand. <laughs> like what the experience would have been like? Well, just buy and be like, because, you know, like you buy a camera now, it's like pretty much a good camera can cost you like a thousand bucks. Right. And it can do really decent photos. But back then, like, how do you choose the camera? You would, okay, so I'm going to assume. Or it's the lens. I guess the lens is the most important. But yeah, the body, I guess. You the, Here's the difference. So the difference now is you go on- online, first of all. You read reviews. You don't even read reviews. You watch reviews. You watch footage. You look at photos. You listen to a YouTuber who like breaks down every single aspect of that thing, of that camera. Yeah. And then you probably order it online. Whereas I'm assuming back in the day, you literally go to like the one camera shop that exists, or maybe there are a couple, and you like talk to the the person who's selling the camera and you get the information. And like there's probably only like one or two cameras to buy from. You know, and maybe at first yeah, and then, things were so much better back in the day where you have actual interaction. Yeah, that sound doesn't people. that sound so much better? Yeah, because now you're just like, oh, I I've read everything. I just want to go and pick it up and get out. I was like, I just want this. There's no like, hey, what's up, man? What do you think about this? It's just more like, I've read all the reviews. I trust whoever wrote it or made a YouTube. I just need to get in, get the fuck out. That's why I'm saying you need to you need to go to the pharmacy to talk to your. <laughs> I'm not gonna to buy your your vitamins, <laughs> it's the same thing. That's why I don't order from Amazon because it you're just you're making everything a transaction and there's no human interaction. But Amazon so, is just so easy. Well, it is easy, and I love it. But that thing that we're talking about, that interaction, the the limited options, the going and talking to someone, and and the experience of it, I think is important. And we don't do that as it's much true. anymore. Super important to have interactions mm-hmm. with other humans and not just on chats, chat rooms, and all that. I don't even know where we're going with this, but interact with folks. That's it. At the gym, but that's in the bathroom stall, <laughs> in the grocery store, at the glory hole, at the glory hole, at the sex cinema. Whoa! whoa. Have you ever been to one of those? I've never been. I've never been to a sex cinema. Yeah, maybe we should go. No, nah, I'll pass. I'll, I'll, I can live without sticky floors. <laughs> yeah, I can't really imagine what it would be like, but it can't be fun. I remember again, when, I don't when, remember when Saint Laurent used to have all the peep shows, yeah, on the street. Like, I wonder how it was in there. Like, what do you do? You go in, like, hey, I'll, I'll take a ticket for DP, my friends. I was like, and then you sit down and you watch it with other dudes or. Girls, wait by peep show. You mean you? What I don't get. I just don't. What's the? I don't know what the experience is in the peep show or. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like those those porno things. Maybe I don't should, know. Uh, I don't. Re- maybe, do, maybe we should know. Maybe maybe we, we should know. Next yeah. next episode, we'll we'll do some research <laughs> and we'll get back to you with that. I feel like I'd feel so dirty, and not in like a, oh that's dirty, but in like a just like Ugh, this is disgusting. No, kind of, it's kind not, of vibe. If, if, there's a market for it. There's probably like people like there's probably a team. They're like, all right, what's our KPIs for uh, for the, the, this cinema? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, for cinema l'amour. Uh, what is cinema the... l'amour? Is like a, a heritage building, right? I guess. Yeah. So well, why haven't we been? I don't want to watch porno with a bunch of other people. You don't want to watch porno with me? Nope. Well, I don't want to watch porno with you. <laughs> But it's just, it's like, <laughs> ah, I think we should change Chubb's subject. <laughs> no, no, this is good. You're getting uncomfortable. This is great. 
uncon- un- uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. No, I, just I mean, don't, I don't want to. I don't I've, know what the experience is like. I have no experience in that going to those cinemas. Right. Maybe we should. Maybe, Maybe we, we should, should do a podcast. That would be great. In the cinema where we just mic ourselves. We go like, oh, well, well this is, uh, <laughs> oh, this is the booth. We go, we, we slap a GoPro on our foreheads. All we And all we hear are like sticky sounds. as do, we they, do, they, do they give popcorn? Do they have like soft drinks in there? Chocolate bars? Uh, I hope not. Imagine being the janitor or the person oh, cleaning God. Up. You know, someone's going to, someone's going to do it. And it's not us. No comment. <laughs> I don't know. Power to whoever wants to do that. Do hey, do thing. whatever you want. Go to the movies. Watch a dirty movie. I mean, I used to work in porn, so who am I to judge anyone for anything that they've ever done? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, I edited porn from a distance. That's all that I did. I was not. Who has in not edited pornos. porn? I have edited porn too. Really. Yes, it was just like a, I your needed own? money. I just needed no, 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 not my own. Jesus, <laughs> it's just easy money. It's just the easiest thing to edit. Yep. It's like two angles. It's like, hey, hold on. I mine were well, I, okay. Yours maybe were like feature films, maybe or not or not. Yeah, even. I did some. I did a Wonder Woman thing. Oh, that was Wonder weird. Woman. Yep. Damn. She was, had a special was it, was, it, was it better than the actual Wonder Woman movie? I mean, we had we had uh, special effects and stuff like that. <laughs> We had green screen and everything. Whoa, that's pretty cool. The soundtrack. We soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Just put in like the Avengers theme song over Wonder Woman. Yeah, it was um, definitely interesting. Huh. I don't miss that job at all, though. So yeah, but at the end of the day, it's just a job. It is, just and a it's job. just like you just look at it. It's like this is the shot composition. The difference is it's like naked people, and then it's like the action is not like somebody walking into a room. It's somebody. Pounding something, so <laughs> that's the only difference. The action is as like when you say action, they're having sex. Yeah, I mean, even for me, like when I first started, I was actually working at Playboy, so that of all things was Woo! kind of like Hugh Hefner. Is yeah. he dead? No, he's still he's still, he's still alive. alive. Yeah, he's like a hundred years old. Yeah, he's kind of a gross. Guy, he's like a w- but, uh, walking skeleton at this point. I don't know. For me, that there was no in Playboy, there was no sex. It was just girls stripping, so it really wasn't even. Now, later in my career, uh, you got hardcore. Oh, yeah. Got hardcore real quick. (laughs) I feel like we should take a segment break. Sex break? (laughs) Sex break. I feel like we should have sex. Whoa. (laughs) Hello. We are taking a quick break. I hope that you are enjoying the podcast so far. I think this one is kind of personally, I think it's all over the place. But, you know, sometimes you have to let your conversation wander. Let's see if the boys are ready to go again. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Wait, let's dive into the pool. (laughs) Maybe we should do this. I can't can't do that. Ah! I gotta lift my back. Or we just do it. Whoa. We're swimming. Where are we? Maybe we should try impressions. Oh, I love doing impressions. Okay. Impressions of I can I can try to do an Australian accent. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. I'm How's it going? Australian, mate. I'm I'm a half Aussie. I should be able to, but I can't. crikey, mate. I look at the crocodile there, mate. Crikey, mate. Throw some shrimps on the barbie. Throw the barbie. Oh yeah. Some boggins back there. Eh? <laughs> One of my really good friends is Australian. So he, some he's, bobbins, bogans, some bogans. Yeah. One of my friends is Australian, so he, when he sees this, he's gonna be like, "You're an idiot, mate. You fucking cunt." Yeah, fucking. You're right, cunt, mate. Oh All right. yeah. All right, I think we're done with with bits or with impressions. Like this is a wrap for today for impressions. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> this is terrible. Wait. This is terrible. What else could we do? I could do the easiest ones. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, mate. we go do it. I didn't do anything specific. Do specific. I just did something random. Yo, what's up? Whoa. Dude. What? I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? what the hell is that? Let's do the <laughs> do the weirdest voice How about you can this? do. My precious. My precious. That's a good. Oh, that's a good. Your neighbors are probably like, what the fuck is going it's on fine. up there? That was a good. That was a good accent. 
wants it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're my precious Johnny. I need it. You shall not pass. That was pretty good too. I'll pass on to you. <laughs> you sound <laughs> stupid as hell. All right, that's great. Great. If, if I would see Schmeagel, I would just kick him in the face. And he would die. And that'd be the end of the movie. What's up, Schmeagel? Pow! Okay. In your face. Well, let's talk about monophonia. <laughs> monophonia. A motherfucker. Motherfucker. Do you want to talk you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I don't know what it okay. is. I don't okay, know okay, what okay, Miss okay, Apolia okay, is. Okay, okay. Is this a safe space? Whatever your definition of safe is. <laughs> Okay. Go ahead. All right. I want to talk about misophonia. Have you ever heard of that before? Misophonia. Can yeah. I have that in the sentence, please? <laughs> um, Timothy often has symptoms from misophonia and feels like he wants to kill people. What is the origin of the word? Um, my brain. Misophonia. So M I S A. Nope. Misophonia, M-I-S-O-P-H-O-N-I-A, misophonia. Um, my definite or the definition, it's basically you have an emotional reaction to audiovisual stimulation, which sounds super vague. What? I, <laughs> let me get there. I'll, I'll keep explaining. Okay. Now by, so the best and best way to explain it is by giving an example. Okay. I am so listening. Some, someone who chews with their mouth open. Yeah. So someone who has misophonia will hear that and they'll get extremely frustrated, angry, ir you know, that kind of thing. I guess I have misophonia. Now, it, it's a, like a pretty common thing. It's just some people have it to like a pretty extreme degree. Okay. Um, I used to have it really bad. Uh, it's a lot better now, but like there are th like it's okay. So what's a trigger for you? Like wh okay, this, so the first let me talk about my first time. The first thing that I think I I started that were that was really fucking me up in my life. Yeah. So when I was a kid, this is maybe like ten years old or something like that. Maybe a little bit older, twelve. My dad used to be the biggest snorer. I guess he still is, but I don't live with him anymore. So that's great. Yeah. But he used to snore so loud that it would like rumble through the house. And he also used to like talk in his sleep. And it was just like, you could really hear it. So for most of my childhood, like for whatever reason, I would never hear it. It just like, I wasn't aware. Yeah. And then I remember one day, I just, I heard it. And I like, you know, when you hear something or like you see something and you can't unsee or can't unhear. Yep. From that point on, like I couldn't not be aware that he was going to snore. Okay. And like, it was like, it just, it was, it, it created this feeling of just like frustration and, and stress and anxiety and like, there's nothing I can do and there's nothing. So after a while I started sleeping with a fan because the fan would be so loud that it would drown out the noise. Yeah. And then I wouldn't be like stressed and I could actually fall asleep. Damn. We, we the, well, I snore and I talk in my sleep. Oh, so. see, yeah, I would, you would have, hate me. I would hate you. You would hate me. If we were to fall asleep right now and you start and I'd be like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's Seriously, it's, 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 it's fucking annoying. More annoying that I have it. And that it bothers me because I wish that it I didn't have it. Well, snoring and stuff like that, that's kind of annoying too. Like I would be annoyed too. Yeah, but it's one thing to be like, like you kind of hear it and you're like, oh, that's annoying. Fall back asleep. It's like, oh my God. It's like it it's you you all your senses are like turned on and you're like, oh well, now I can't fall asleep. And you're and you like focus in on it, right? Yeah. I think what it is is it's especially when it's like repetitive, almost like rhythmic sounds. Yeah. So like a snoring, you know it's coming, right? It's like. 
<laughs> but it, it, you know, it comes and goes. It come, It's not just like a once and then it's gone, right? It's yeah. like, it's not stopping. Same for chewing, right? Someone chews with their mouth open, like, like, uh, it's the worst. Yeah, it's just annoying in general. Um, it could be as, as simple things as like, Someone tapping like a pen nonstop or keyboards like just a typing finger. super loud. Is that annoying? That's annoying. Sometimes if it's too much or too repetitive, if I can suddenly catch on to like a rhythm, yeah, or I see like there's a pattern going on, my brain can really focus in on it and then it is like it can't get away from it. So have you snapped at somebody? Have you been like, fucking stop um, doing that? At my family, I have definitely snapped. Damn. At my dad, I've gotten super angry. Can't uh, picture you angry at all for some reason. Tune in to episode five for Angry Tim. Oh. I've never seen you angry. Oh, well. Maybe, I see Poker Face, Tim. Maybe one day. What's Poker but, Face, Tim? Oh, just your, your stupid face, this Poker Face. <laughs> okay. it's, like, it's like, I can't, I can read you, but I can't read oh, you. Mysterious. Uh, I can get angry. I, I generally stay pretty cool, but I can get angry. Seriously, episode five. I'm pissed. Blackout angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my, what my mom does, and if you're listening, mom, you already know this. Uh, when we're driving, she'll like chew gum and she'll chew with her mouth open. And every time I got to tell her, I'd be like, close your fucking mouth. No, I don't say that, but like, whoa, whoa, you know, white people are there <sighs> swearing at parents. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe like, close your fucking, I'd be dead. No, close I obviously your- don't say that. I just like, <laughs> Could you please chew with your mouth closed? <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was in university, it was pretty bad. And I would I'd be in like film class and it'd be like a four hour movie and it'd be like a silent film. And someone's like, you know, eating food or chewing or doing something. I would often have to get up and go to the bathroom just to like get away Jeez. from the sound because it was like under oh, like overwhelming. Yeah. So how about when you were editing episode two and I was just like <gasps> Oh, I had to put music on in the background. And, oh, actually, I just muted your track. Because, oh, okay. And I'm going to have to go in and, and remove all your heavy breath. <laughs> sorry. It, it, and the, the weird thing, well, don't be sorry. It's just, it, the thing is, it's not anyone's fault. People are just being people. It's your fault. It's all it's your me. fault. It's me. It's me. And I had a realization in the past year talking to a friend of mine who's a bit of like a, he's like a psychologist. Super and, misophonia guy. Oh, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> but he he kind of was like, so when you're feeling bad and stressed and whatever, like, is anything actually bad happening to you realistically? And I'm like, well, no, obviously not. It's like, so, you know, it's obviously in your head, right? And I'm All like, I can hear is a plane. Oh, should we? Should I have we misophonia right now. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Just kidding. Noise made from non-humans or things like machines, cars, city life is fine. Totally fine. If anything, oh. comforting and like soothing. Like that's why I love a fan because it's not like it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So a human. It's when it's it, don't like humans. Here's the link. It's when humans are doing things that I think they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And things that I can't control. So I think it links to me being a bit, a little bit of a control freak, and oh, it's that the person. So for example, my dad is snoring. Yeah, and it's like I can't stop him, and it's not his fault. I can't go tell him to stop, and even if I do, it won't stop. Yeah, but he's doing what he's not supposed to be doing, or something bad, and I don't like it. And that's my own shit, and I need to get over it. Huh. Interesting. Well. I have learned something today. <laughs> Misophonia is a thing. It's a thing. We'll put the definition at the bottom so you guys could yeah. know it. Does any, any of you else, any of you guys, I'm sure there are other people who yeah, have misophonia. Leave, uh, comment below. Tell Maybe, us about your misophonia. What's the worst thing that your family does or that people around you do that you hate the most? Um, or maybe you have these feelings, but you never knew it was something. Now you know. Look it up. It helps to know. And uh, that's it. Yo, you know what's giving me misophonia right now? Your face. Your fucking foot in my peripheral vision. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> speaking of. Speaking of. <laughs> I'm going to do this one like this. So, I'm just going to stare at you I'm gonna the stare whole time. 
Do you like when I? <laughs> you don't like when I stare back at you. I have misophonia. Oh, let me light up the thing. We're blessing Tim. All right, let's do our movie review. Movie review with Tim and Johnny. We should cut to the clip of the recommendation for this week's movie. Cut to the clip. Hi, guys. Got your first film? House by Obayashi. Enjoy. Cool. So Dennis recommended us the movie House. House. From, it's, I think it's made in the 70s. 1977. Do you remember who the director was? I don't. We'll, we'll leave it in the description. Going into it, I had no clue what it was. Watched zero trailers. Yep. Haven't read anything about nope. it. And why don't we play our, our clips of our before oh, yeah. and after? All right. Cut to the clip. So this week's movie that me and Tim are supposed to watch is this movie called House. From Nobuhiku Obayashi, 1977. It's about all I know. We haven't watched any trailer. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into. House, the title doesn't really give much away. So this is the, the movie. The cover reminds me of the the cat from Alice in Wonderland. Honestly, I'm a little concerned because I feel like this is most likely some sort of horror film. It looks creepy. And for those of you who don't know, I don't really like horror films. I get generally scared pretty easily. Creepy. This might be an interesting watch. We'll see how I feel after it. We'll see what it is. Hi there. So just finished watching House. A lot to digest. Um, some weird editing, weird cuts, the music selection. There's some elements of anime and the way it's, you know, the way it is. Uh, very interesting first choice, Dennis. I was not expecting that. Um, okay. <laughs> what the fuck was that movie? Did I like it? Actually, kind of. Definitely was a horror movie predicted that was i scared definitely not i'm gonna throw words out there transitions editing matte paintings blue screen animation sound design camera movement like what the fuck but overall you know what great art film very interesting i think we'll both like it that's my prediction i think a lot of other people would be like this is some bullshit like what the fuck is going on it's a horror film and i kind of enjoyed it so Says a lot. Shout outs to Japanese cinema in the 1970s. Pretty fucking sick. That's my review. Back to the podcast. And there you have it. That's how we felt. That's how before, we felt. Before and after. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it, what was good about it is, like, I did not, like, I've heard about the movie by probably seeing the cover, but I did not know exactly what I was getting myself into. And I think before I watched it, I thought it was going to be a scary movie. Me too. Yep. And I think it was meant to be a horror movie, but it was so psychedelic. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure. I feel like it was almost trying to play the line of like being scary, but also being like really goofy and silly. And then, like you said, psychedelic. So the movie itself, it felt like an anime, the way it was edited or the way it was acted. And yes, I don't know. Like, I, even Hold just, on, before we get in, give a short description of the movie for people who haven't seen it. Just a little summary of... Okay, this is my it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard because I was like, okay. So this girl goes away to her aunt's house. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, like, what's the... I don't know, like, the dad... Okay, so the her mom... Stepmom. Okay, let me, so her mom is passed. This girl, this oh, yes, yeah. high school girl in Japan, her mother's dead, and her father... Uh, introduces this new girlfriend and she's really unhappy. And so she's like, I'm going to go to my aunt's for summer break or something along those lines. And Jen, I think she's in a choir or like a band or something. And usually they would go away to something for practice for like a couple of weeks or a weekend or I don't know what, but that thing is canceled. So her and her entire band go with her to her aunt's house. 
That she hasn't seen in years. That she hasn't seen in forever. Since her mother died, I think. I think that's it. Yeah. But then they get to this place. Yep. And a bunch of weird things happen. They get to the house and everything ends up going freaky because basically her aunt is like kind of like a ghost slash succubus-ish thing. Or cannibal. Or cannibal. Has powers. And basically, almost everyone dies. Do, or do they all die? Do they? All, I don't. I do. I don't I, even remember. I don't even know how it. Like I don't understand the ending. Oh, so the ending. Well, should we add spoilers? Or <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know what to spoil. To, to the, <laughs> it's true. so like. So I, I actually spoke with Dennis uh, the other day, and he told me the movie was so. It's written by the director or the the person and his daughter, I think. I might be wrong, but I think it's there's a part so the daughter wrote parts of it. So that's why it's like a bit weird. And the movie was didn't like like the way it was pitched, uh nobody wanted to make this film and then they managed that makes to, sense. to make it. But ah oh man. Cause there's like a lot of weird like uh seventy style like editing or the the use of it felt like they, they figured out green screen. Yes, and they, they just, blue screen actually. Blue screen, and then just just kept using it. Yeah, like the part with the piano eating the girl. That was kind of cool. Though. That was cool, but all, like it was like it felt unselling to me that it came, became kind of like a creepy weird. Like it was, I wasn't scared, but I was just like, this is so bizarre. Yeah, and I was telling myself like, so imagine, okay, extremes. Uh-huh. Imagine like you get kidnapped. Uh-huh. And then you wake up, you're tied to a chair, yeah. and this movie is playing. Oh, I would freak the fuck out. That's how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> but just that there was that innocence of, you know, the the girls, the way they were, like, it felt like an anime, the way they were acting and everything. <sighs> That's the, the cuts thing. The, the, no, the whole thing, the whole movie felt like I was watching an anime. Yeah. And then the weird transition with the Kung Fu girl, which is like. Thank very, God for Kung Fu. Very like. Ultraman, like type of like, like if you if you're used to watching that type of like movie, but it's just it was like super. I don't know. It was just like her kicking doors, <laughs> and then it was super silly. Well, that was interesting because each each of the girls from the 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 group, all the friends, they all had a name, and all of their names were like their definition. So the main character's name is Gorgeous. Yes, and so her whole thing is like she's always always putting on makeup. Yeah, and then another girl's name is Kung Fu. <laughs> Yeah, and she does kung fu literally like flips and like music plays while she does that shit. Yeah. and then you know someone is like Mac because she's hungry. Yeah, all the time, and then someone is like uh, fantasy because she's always yeah. like imagining that things are going on, and so their characters are like very singular archetype stereotypes of their names, which is kind of interesting that they did that. But the the music. The, the music did not fit at all. Or did it? It did not. It was just so... <laughs> it was strange. like 70s music, no? Yeah, but just in the scenes where it's like, it was like, like there's that scene where it's like a, almost like a spy movie, but then you yeah. put that in there, it didn't fit. It kind of gave me like Twin Peaks music vibe where it's like happy, but unsettling. Yeah, very weird. Yeah, like the whole time I was waiting to like, something crazy to happen yeah but enough like the whole thing was already crazy like i was just like what am i watching <laughs> and and actually like i i got high before what you did drugs <laughs> well i got smoked marijuana that's, marijuana. that's it's legal <laughs> and then i got it this it's like oh my god this is gonna be a trip and it, it, it surprisingly it was but I, I see even to now i don't even know how to explain the movie that's so that's another thing is that it was nonstop from beginning to end. Do you know what I mean? Like there everything was done on purpose. Which to which to me I give full respect to the director and the creators of that film because every moment they were like was made with a reason. Yeah. Even if it was bad or weird or silly or goofy or whatever. Like there was no moment where it's just like, well, let's just have some characters talk and like exposition. There was none of that. Everything felt like an art piece kind of thing. Yeah. Did you think that, you know, okay, so the first part in the beginning of the movie before they go to the aunt's house, 
I love that part. It was it was shot differently. No, like it, it felt like it felt more like like old retro. And then, retro, and then, and then there was that weird transition where it jumped into the more like adventures part of the movie. Yeah, like it, it felt like two different movies. No, or two different styles. Yes. Well, the thing is that they kept. I feel like they didn't find a style, and then okay, this is what we're doing for the whole film. I felt I felt yeah. like they were experimenting. The whole time. All the way through. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, dude, with everything, like literally everything. Like, the cat? Can you talk about the cat? That, you could just only talk about the yeah, cat. Yeah, because the cat was like, it was meowing the whole movie. Oh, that was kind of And annoying. then it turned into a music. It was meowing in the music. Yeah. And then the little like effects on the eyes. The laser eyes. The <laughs> laser eyes, that means like, that was like a magic thing. They, yeah. So that the aunt was able to turn the kids into things. So it turned that kid into the watermelon, right? Did the it, head though? It, I eventually, I guess she was. I guess her head was a watermelon, and they were eating her head. And then it was floating, <laughs> and then it was floating. But then there was the doll turned that other person oh, it's into true. a doll. That's true. Oh, I and then there was that dolls. the piano ate the girl that played piano. Yeah, and then it was. I think this film is definitely an absurd film because. Characters see things and freak out, but then also then they're cool and relaxed. So it's like nothing really is grounded or in the like real world kind of yeah. thing, but still like real world things. And are there was like happening. possessions, like the girl was possessed at some point. I don't know, yeah. like like I, okay. So besides like the film feel like an anime, I also felt like if this was made now, it would feel like a movie like. Uh, what's that? Leonard Snicket's like uh, Miss Unfortunate Events. Hmm. Like it, it had like that whole like more like, or the witches movie. You know that whole vibe of like like yeah, goofy. almost almost like a Tim Burton movie, but not but more extreme kind of like yeah, dark humor. I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. It's here. Here's my impression. So I saw the cover, and I have I'd never seen the movie before. The covers may be familiar, but I'm not even sure. All I know is that I hate horror films. <laughs> and I'm like, this is probably going to be something really fucked up. And so the entire time, I was waiting for it to get really like, to be scared and to really like, oh, something's going to happen and I'm going to be like uneasy or whatever. <laughs> but because the film, like even though like horror things are happening, they keep it so light. Like there was... Like the girls, the way that they talk and act, and like the music would be like do do do. Like, so it was never, you never, they never let it get scary because they always kept like a light, fun thing happening. Yeah, it's true. But it was, you, I don't. Oh man, <laughs> I don't even know what what to say. I really enjoyed. It. I enjoyed when, it too, dude. At the beginning, when it's like, so they they'll have like a shot, and then they'll have they had like a frame within the frame. Yeah, and part of it was frozen, then part of it was moving. And then they had like, uh, there was a scene where she's talking to the dad and he's out on the balcony. Oh, and they used tons of uh, matte paintings, right? Yeah. They had matte paintings of like the sky for certain things, which was super obvious and not like, I don't think they even meant for it to look real. I think they wanted it to look like it was a set almost. Then they had like the camera moving behind this glass door that had like, I don't know, different like panels in it. So it would like, warp what you saw behind it and that was super yeah, it was know, very like, creative and it was super awesome. creative i'm like oh this is good i'm getting in creative <laughs> juices and i'm <laughs> i'm gonna be inspired this is a great thing that we're doing it felt like watching like like the way also the way that they were acting is very mm -hmm. like a play right there was a lot of big pauses yes a lot of like i, I feel like japanese movies do like have a lot of expression you know like they, mm -hmm. they, they focus a lot on like facial expression or just like leaving big pauses to to like accentuate like these scenes. Like, you know, like Kurosawa movies has a lot of like those moments too, yeah. right? But this one was just like... You know, I weirdly felt comforted the second I realized it was a Japanese film. Oh, yeah? I was like, oh, okay. 19, like, and because it was 1970s, I'm like, this can't be that scary. Yeah, exactly, right? There's, some, and I, there's something about Japanese cinema that I find is like really interesting. No, I was just waiting for that. It was just unsettling for me. And then I was just waiting like you, like, like, 
oh, is there going to be like a weird, I, like I wasn't scared. I was just going to be like, is, there's, it has to be like an extremely weird moment mm-hmm. about to happen. But mm-hmm. then it just kept happening. I had like shivers sometimes. Like really? every, like once or twice, something was kind of like, oh, I think I'm supposed to be scared. And it was like a little shiver, but that was a, that was about it. But overall, I quite enjoyed it. And it was a Me really too. good movie. And everyone must watch it at least once. Yeah, I don't know if any everyone could get through it. I think it's it's not too long and it's not too like I think it's fun. And if you yeah, try it out. It's a fun movie. So go watch the movie House. It's available at Lopez. Oh. You can buy it. Shout like outs. physical Blu-ray DVD. Or if you have the Criterion channel, you could stream it. Mm-hmm. But you must watch it. It's not typical like Hollywood movie. This is like it's good. It's not like anything else you've probably seen, which is nice. Yeah. I and think the and the advantage for us going in completely blind is a really fun experience. Yeah, and I think people should just do that more like uh just watch <laughs> random movies without really looking they, into the So cover. they just they can't do that with house cuz we just told them Yeah, they can't everything. do that, but hey, that's that's the thing. Like next week's movie, I'm not I don't even know what we're going to watch, but Dennis is going to let us know. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a fun time or not. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll post the movie a week in advance on our Instagram when these are coming out. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll post the movie so that if you want to watch ahead of the podcast, you can watch it and you won't get spoiled. And then, uh, yeah, then you can see our review. Yeah, and leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about what you what your thoughts were on the movie. Mm-hmm. And, you know. All right, let's do it. What's your rating? What would you give it? Out of what... I'll, I'll go first. I'm going to give it eight Kung Fu's out of 10. Ooh, eight. That's pretty good. Eight Kung Fu's. I would do the same too. Eight out of 10. Yeah. Eight melons out of 10. Eight because it's it's good. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, I think the horror could have been better and maybe a little more overall direction to keep things like, like makes more sense, but... For what it was. But that's what made good. it charming yeah. and fun. Yeah. You know, sometimes movies are just movies and they can't have, you know, sense. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just watch it for yourself. Leave a comment below and let us know what you th- what your thoughts were on the movie. What an incredible start to our our criterion reviews. Yeah. What an amazing <laughs> it is a recommendation. Good, it was a good that job, was incredible. Dennis. Thank you. And then, what yeah. is he going to send to us next? I don't know. I'm he, equally he, scared he and now asked intrigued. Me, like, like, do you want like classics? I was told him like, whatever, like whatever that we haven't seen, and it has to be like a surprise. Yeah, because the Criterion Collection is there's a lot of movies out there's there, a lot. and some of them can be very slow and long. Mm-hmm. Some of them can be very art house film. That's what that was. Yes, but apparently that's like a really classic movie, part of the collection. So, wow. But yeah, no, I'm excited for the next ones. And I can easily say I would never have watched that. I don't think, not because I wouldn't have chosen to, but I don't think I would have even come across it. Or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think I would, I would have gone with the rest of my life never seeing House. But I think it's good that we're doing this because it's going to force it. us to watch movies like we were watching like back in cinema school. Yeah. Stuff like that. I think like we're so used to watching Hollywood movies, and you know, don't get me wrong, they're great. But these ones, I feel like they, they're they're either somewhat slower, but you kind of enjoy the craft way more. And you know, I feel like the way they're editing or cutting films right now, it's always mm-hmm. for like your short attention span. Hundred percent. I, f- I find like movies from those collections are just made as art pieces versus you know whatever you get out of them is like. To your own like uh, benefit, benefit versus like, like oh this is oh he has a plan he needs to go save the earth and that's it which is yeah ninety percent of the movies out there right now and also just the way that we're doing it where we're not on Netflix just like hey what's the newest movie or the yeah. next it's just like it's already chosen for us all you have to do is sit down and press play and see what happens yes we're going in blind but awesome. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I think that's it. I think that I think, I think this we, wraps up. We should wrap this, this one up. It's been podcast. 
This is the number three. Thanks for listening. Shout outs to our sponsor, Chips. They keep me going for every day of my life. Whenever chips. I'm feeling bad, I eat a nice full chips. bag of chips. Yeah. And remember, drink water drink responsibly. Lots of water. Responsibly. Oh. Responsibly. Yeah. Don't drown. Thanks for listening or watching. And yeah. Let's song it out. See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. We got weirdest feelings, gator. All right. See you later, alligator. Bye. Bye.